Shalom, Cole Yisraya. Once again, I'm sitting here live, Zakane Yeramiah, with you. And we are going to discuss tonight concerning the Dom or the blood, the purpose of it, the requirement, and what was the use, what did Yahweh have in plan for the Dom concerning his house, Yisraya. We do hope you all are brought tonight by, by the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. We do welcome you all to listen on via of live stream. Hallelujah. This past Yom, this past day, we had had Pesach, this Pesach, and the Sedar meal, the foot washing service, as we may call it. And also we partake of the Dom, the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. But what is the purpose of all this? Why do we do it? Is it just for formality? Has it been instructed by Yahweh for us to do this, that we may zakah, that we may remember him? And what is the purpose of the Dom? As Yahweh passed over Mizraim, over Yisrael, in Egypt, what was that purpose? Why did, did he have to go through such a diverse act, it's such an act of consequence, Yisrael. And we will explain that and get into that as I do continue. But first of all, just Barak you all for listening. We do hope that the imuna of Yahshua HaMashiach stands strong in your left tonight, Yahshua, Yisrael. And just bear with me to, tonight. It has been a while since I have been on live with you all. And we do, I do hope that this message is an inspiration to your left tonight. And that it will barack you concerning the Dom or the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach and its purpose. Hallelujah. I do want to begin, Yisrael, starting in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. And what I want to deal with is the first um, scriptures in Torah that talks about the Dom or the blood, and also a little bit concerning the garment. Hallelujah. So I want to begin in Bereshit Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, verse 13, And Yahweh said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent had beguiled me, and I did eat. One thing I want us to keep in mind, even at this Israel in verse 13, that the serpent did beguile Eve. He came into her, she allowed him into her mind, into her love, into her heart. And that act, he was able to plant a seed in her bosom, in her mind, in her love. And Yahweh said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, and upon your belly shall you go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Talk about Satan. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. What does that entail for us, Yisrael? That they are the seed of the serpent, and they are a seed of the woman. And it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Verse 16. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. And sorrow you shall bring forth children, bane. And your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I have commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed be the ground for your sake. Why was the ground cursed, Yisrael? How was it for the sake of Adam? That it may be a, rem a remembrance every time he would to till or went to till and the ground bear forth the thorns and the thistles. He said, curse be the ground for your sake and sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto you and you shall eat the herb of this field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and for dust you shall return. And Adam said to his wife, Eve, because, call his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all, the, uh, all living. Verse 21. 
Uh, to Adam also, to his wife, the Yahweh, make coats of skin. This is where Yahweh made coats of skin that they may that their nakedness will be covered, Yisrael. We know that when Yahweh created Adam, that there was no shame of the nakedness. Everything was open. There was nothing to hide, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be ashamed of. But because he transgressed the Torah or the word of Almighty Yahweh, it caused his nakedness or him to realize that there is a shame for trespassing the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 21. Unto Adam also... And to his wife did Yahweh make coats of skin, and he did clothe them. And Yahweh said, Behold, Adam has become like one of us, now morally knowing right and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat, he will live forever. There's a purpose why I'm reading this year's right, and I will get to a point in Scripture. But I want to understand uh, what has happened beforehand. Verse 23. Therefore Yahweh sent, forth them, sent them out of the garden to till the ground from whence it was taken. So he drove them out and he placed cherubims at the east of the guard, east of Eden. And a flaming sword was turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Now here we are getting into the birth of the two sons of Adam and Eve. And Adam knew his wife Eve. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have begotten a man from Yahweh. So we know that Cain, he was the firstborn, the oldest. In verse 2, and she bare again his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but unto Cain he was a tiller of the ground. So in this process we understand Yisrael, that Yahweh, he clothed Adam and he clothed Eve. What were their clothing like? I don't believe that her parts were exposed. I believe they were fully clothed from the shoulder, the arms, all the way down to the feet, Israel. I believe Yahweh clothed them fully, that their nakedness would not appear. They're not Yahshua, Hamashiach. Well, we're not clothed with the garments of Sadiq, Israel, from the top of our head all the way down to the soles of our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 3, that in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto Yahweh. So it come a time where it was time for them to offer an offering unto Yahweh. I believe that Adam, that he did teach them that it, it would be an understanding that there is a time that we must offer an offering unto Yahweh. What offering should we offer unto Yahweh? Should it be the workers of our hands? Or should it be what Torah commands us to do at these Migron, these feast days, uh, the, the yams of Yahweh, hallelujah. And in the process of time, Cain brought the fruits of the ground as an offering unto Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock. Should we bring the firstlings or the first fruits of our labor, Yisrael, unto Almighty Yahweh? He commands that. That's what he desires. He desires us to bring what he has commanded us through Torah, not the works of our hands, but what he has commanded of being the first fruits of his labor, hallelujah, unto him. And of the fact thereof. So this entails that there had to have been a butchering of the lamb, a shedding of blood as an offering for what? Offering of the sins, a trespass offering unto Almighty Yahweh. That's what he desired, Yisrael. Even unto this time, he desires an offering of blood. What is that offering of blood? Should we go out as in time past and as Abel did and uh, slay a lamb, butcher a lamb, that the blood is shed, we bring the fat, the firstlings of the fruit unto Almighty Yahweh? Or has Yahweh provided a Peshach for Yisrael? Hallelujah. And again, in Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And Yahweh, he had respect to Abel's offering and to, to Abel and to his offering. Why? Because Abel, he obeyed what Yahweh had commanded him to do. This is a type of Yahshua, Hamashiach, obeying the Abba. Did, it, did not Yahshua please Almighty Yahweh in everything, all things? Did he not obey Abba Yahweh? 
did not bring the first fruits unto him, Yisrael. Was it not an offering for Yisrael for our sins? Hallelujah. Yet he had to be perfect and without spot and without blemish, Yisrael. Verse 5. But to Cain and his offering, it says that Yahweh, he had no respect. Why? Because Cain, he brought forth the fruit of his labor, what he has done. The pride of his labor, of his hard work, he believed that was acceptable unto Almighty Yahweh. But Yahweh did not have respect for his offering because he required the offering of the dom and of the fat, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And Yahweh said to Cain, why are you wroth? And why is your countenance fallen? He says, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you do not well, he says, sin lies at the door and to you shall be his desire and you shall rule over him. So Yahweh he even said to Cain, all you have to do, Cain, is do what I have commanded you to do. And your offering will be accepted. You will be accepted unto me, just as your brother Abel. That's all we have to do, Yisrael, is obey Almighty Yahweh and some things that he has commanded us and just parts of the Torah that we believe we can abide by and what we like. No, he commands us to do what his mishvah instructs us to do, whether it be the offerings unto Almighty Yahweh or the sacrifices, if I may use that term, unto Almighty Yahweh. He has commanded us to do that. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Let us move on. Some things I do want to point out. We know that Cain, he slew his brother. He slew his brother and shed his blood, his dom, onto the ground. And even the testament of that blood, we know that Abel, he obeyed Yahweh and his offering unto him at this time. And he and Cain was not accepted by Almighty Yahweh. And because of the jealousy, the sin that was in his love, he slew his brother. He killed his brother. And what happened? The blood did cry out a testimony against him. Hallelujah. The blood did cry out. Don't you know that the Dom of Yahshua, it still cries out today, Yisrael. We know that the Dom is for our salvation, for our cleansing, for the purging of all of our sins. But if we do not walk according to the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, the blood of Yahshua also cries against us, Yisrael. So what do we do as a people? Do we go and sin before Almighty Yahweh? Do we transgress the Torah that the Dom of Yahshua be shed afresh, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Yahweh forbid. We know that Yahshua, he came, he gave his life, he gave his nephesh, he gave his, his love, his ahava, and his tub just once for all men. And that's it. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given us the ultimate offering for the sins of all men, Yisrael, hallelujah. Let us continue on. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, in verse 8. And it came to pass when they were in the field, in the field where no one could see them, where he thought that uh, the eyes of Yahweh would not know. Even in his sin, he didn't think Yahweh could see what he was doing, about to do, Yisrael. And Cain, he rose up. Against Abel, his brother, and he slew him. He killed him. He slayed him, Yisrael. And Yahweh said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I know not. He lied. He lied. He did not tell the truth, Yisrael. That is a seed of Satan. Satan operating in Cain. Because we know that Satan, he was a liar from the beginning, was he not? Did Cain tell the truth? Was he honest? Did he think that he would deceive Almighty Yah? And Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass when they were in the field, in verse 8, that Cain, he rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He shed the innocent blood. And Yahweh said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Should I be the one to watch after my brother? Was he not the eldest? Yisrael. Even at this time, it's expected that even in most cultures, 
that the oldest, the eldest, looks over the house. Hallelujah. He looks over his brother. Even when I was in school, I watched after my little brothers. I protected them. I kept them. I made sure that they was all right. And I'm pretty sure most of you had experienced the same thing, Israel. You had friends or your buddies. They watched you back. They watched after you. You felt responsible for one another. Even when one, some, someone got caught doing something that you always doing, you felt somewhat responsible. You were even willing even to even share in the repercussions of that because you were close to your friend or close to your brother or your aunt. But Abel, he denied that he even knew what happened unto Abel. Cain denied that he even knew what happened to Abel. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And he said, what have you done? What is this trespass? What is this thing you have done? We see the dom of innocent Abel shed. He said, the voice of your brother's blood, of your brother's dom, it do cry from me from the ground. Do you hear that, Yisrael? Do you understand that the dom, the blood of Cain, did cry out? Cry out as a testimony for Cain or against Cain? Of course, against Cain. He went and shed innocent blood, Israel. Don't you know that we have committed this act of Cain? Hallelujah. Yes, we have. We committed this act of Cain. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach? Was he not beaten on that stake? Did he not die upon that stake, Israel? Why? That should have been us there. That was our reward for our iniquities, what Yahshua HaMashiach did suffer on that stake. But yet he did it willingly for you and I, Yisrael. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. That is beautiful. Let us move on, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And again, you're listening to Shema Yisrael. I am Zakain Yaramia, sitting here live with you all, those that are listening by via of live stream. We're talking about the Dom tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We know that we have had Passover. Hallelujah. And it was important that even at that time and this time, that the dom or the blood of the lamb or the goat had to be upon the doorpost, had to be stricken upon the doorpost, Israel. Do we still do this act at this time? Do we take a lamb or a goat out of the sheep or out of the goat fold? Do we butcher it? And do we take that blood and strike it on the doorpost? Or has that been done for us, Israel? Why do you think this is called, this is Yahweh's Pesach? Hallelujah. Because Yahweh has provided the lamb for Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us move on, Yisrael. To Bereshit, Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. I want to begin reading. And Yahweh blessed Noah, talking about Noah, and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. This is when the rains came, Noah, he warmed his generation at that time of the floods that was coming from Almighty Yahweh and destroyed all flesh except those that were on the ark. He says in verse 2, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the, of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moves upon the earth and upon all the fish of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, Yahweh says. Every little thing that lives shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb, I give you all things. So even as he has given, even Adam and Eve at the beginning, the herb of the field, that they may eat the fruit of the field. He is saying here that every, everything that lives shall be meat for you, even as the herb. I have given you all things. We know, Yisrael, that there are certain things that we should not have, we should not eat. And Torah does explicitly command us what to eat and what not to eat. But we're talking about the dumb tonight. Hallelujah. Let me move on. Hallelujah. Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 9. He said, but the flesh with the life thereof, what is the life of the flesh? It is in the dumb. It is the blood. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is in the dom, in the blood thereof, he said, you shall not eat. Why? Why? Because he simply just commanded us, Israel, 
not to. Now, there are many of us, Israel, y'all, that even at the sight of, the, of blood, we run, we panic. Uh, it's it's a eerie and, and nasty thing to a lot of people. Blood, to see blood, uh, the butchering of an animal, seeing the blood, it is a vile thing. And blood is vile in some instances, in, in some cases, Yisrael. But also the dom is also the light of the body. It's the life of the body. It's the high. And what keeps the flesh cleansed, it cleanses, it keeps the flesh alive, it keeps it strong, and it keeps it vibrant, that it may have the life. That's where the blood lies, Yisrael, in the life of the flesh. Hallelujah. There's some beautiful things in this teaching we will get into, Yisrael. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is in the blood thereof, he said, you should not eat. You should not consume that. I don't want you to eat that. I don't want you to use that be... Y'all don't want you to use that to be what fills your belly. Verse 5. And surely your blood, your dom, of your lives will I require. So Yahweh, he requires the life. He requires the blood. He requires even the nephesh, our soul, it all. We all belong to Yahweh to do what he will. Is he justified in what he does? That he has asked our permission, Yisrael? Hallelujah. When Yahweh killed the firstborn, of Mizraim, those that did not have their doorposts stricken with the dom of the lamb or of the goat, was Yahweh justified in striking down the Egyptians or anybody's house that did not have the Israel? Yes, he was. He was justified. I've heard men try to somewhat take that out of the teaching concerning um, um, the Peshach of Yah. The striking of the blood on the doorpost. Because to our ears, it seemed like a, a ghastly act, Yisrael. Hallelujah, which it is. Hallelujah. Do not the world, they kill all the time, Yisrael. The atomic bombs, the weapons of warfare, they kill. Men kill without a cause, and yet they can find a reason to justify it. But yet Yahweh's not justified in what he do, Yisrael. That is a wickedness. Hallelujah. That is a wickedness of this nation. Verse 4, verse 5. And surely your blood, your dawn of your lives will I require. It is mine. It's my possession. At the hand of every beast will I require it. It belongs unto Yahweh, the life. And at the hand of the sons of Adam, and at the hand of every son of Adam's brother, Will I require the life or the dawn of the son of man or the men, Adam? Whoso sheds the son of Adam's blood by the sons of Adam shall his blood be shed. This is the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. If we kill without reason, innocent, without a cause, as Abel was killed. Don't you know that the blood of Abel was required? That Cain was required from Almighty Yahweh to give reason why he did what he did, Yisrael. He did not pass for that. Uh, he was cursed for that, Yisrael. He did not go uh, trotting freely after he murdered his brother. Hallelujah. Do we think the dumb of Yahshua, as it was shed, that we can just kick it under the rug, that we can trample over his dumb, and it shall not be required of us, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Do we think that it's just a passing fancy, that we could just, all the blood, okay, then that's okay, that's all right. That we do not count the power of the cleansing of the dumb of Yahshua as being a powerful act from Almighty Yahweh, of his Ahava and of his commitment to his people. Not for every man, but unto his people, Yisrael. Do we think that Yahweh is just going to forget that? No, we're going to be judged and cursed if we deny the dumb of Yahshua Hamashiach. We shall be required, hallelujah, to give an answer even at the day of judgment, Yisrael. So the Yahweh. Let us move on to Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. We're talking about the Dom tonight, Yisrael. We're talking about the Dom. Yaakov. And Yaakov dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger. 
in the land of Canaan. Verse 2. These are the generation of Yaakov, Yosef, being 17 years of age old, was feeding the flock with his brother. And the lad was with the sons of Beliah and with the sons of Zilpha and, the, and his father's wives. And Yosef, he brought to his father an evil report. Now, Yisrael loved Yosef more than all of his sons because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat, a garment of many, of many colors. I believe that was a beautiful garment, Yisrael, of many colors, showing that this covering which he carried showed the vastness of the house of Yisrael. Hallelujah. The vastness of the house. And yet this garment covered him his arms, his full body, even down to his legs, Israel. Hallelujah. We should be clothed with this garment of Sadiq, this garment of righteousness. Now, Israel, verse 3, Now, Israel loved Yosef more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren. They hated him. They hated him because his avat showed him more hava. Not that he didn't love his other sons, but that he showed a particular interest in this young man. And they hated him. They hated him. Don't you know that they killed or slew his brother already, that we should not hate one another, Israel. We should not hate our or our hope. They hated him, it says, and could not speak shalom. They could not speak peace, lovely things unto him. And Yosef, he dreamed a dream. He had a vision, a dream. And he told his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. They saw nay. They hated him yet the more. Can you imagine that? Someone just hating you? I believe he loved his older ark. I don't believe he would do anything to harm his other ark. He wanted to talk with them. I believe even as a young man, he wanted to be like them, saw their strength, saw their fortitude, and he wanted to uh, be like them. Yes, right, y'all. But yet his brothers hated him yet even the more. And he said to them, here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Now, he was not boasting. He was probably just a little confused, uh, wandering, maybe from his older, older arc, being Zarkane, older than he, that they can give him some wisdom. So he wanted to share this dream with him. He said in verse 7, For I behold, we were biding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood around about and made abiances to my sheep. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? Shall you rule over us or have power over us? We're your older are. Do you tell me that, that the the range of all things or the customs all of a sudden are going to change. We are older. Uh, was not Cain older than Abel? Hallelujah. Was not Abel offering um, justified or honored by Almighty Yahweh? Cain was the oldest, wasn't he? But yet the youngest was the one that provided the offering that Yahweh has desired. And even the jealousy was wrought. In Cain, that he slew his brother. We even see that example in the Torah. Satan, her, hating the Torah, the mitzvah, the truth of Almighty Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach. And he tried all he could in the last days of Yahshua HaMashiach to destroy him. But we all know that Yahshua, he had the power over all things and that he gave up his Ruach. Now the enemy was not able to take it. If they would have known, the Torah says this. If they would have known, they would never crucified or they would never have killed 
Yahshua Hamashiach on that state. Were well, they not jealous of him? Did not, did not they hate Yahshua Hamashiach when he would tell them that he is the king of Israel, that he is the leader? Yes, there was older men, older Zakane at that time that was even je jealous of the knowledge of Yahshua Hamashiach and the way he spoke. They could not match him, Yisrael. So what did they do? Hallelujah. What did they do? We know what they did, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Verse 8. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet even the more for his dreams, for his visions. He saw something that he didn't quite understand, Yisrael. He was just seeking for an answer in his ark and for his words. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream. Can you imagine even the tall and that young man, there was nobody he really could go to. There was no answer that was really given to, to him, a young man. We do experience that at times uh, as we read the Torah, as we see some things. There's some things we just don't understand. So we look to the Zakane, those that have the wisdom, those that have the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh to instruct us in what to do. Why? Because we are yet young, hallelujah, and unlearned. That's why it's important for us to have the Ruach HaKodash of Almighty Yahweh. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brothers. And they said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream, a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisances unto me. And he told that to his, to his father and to his brother. And his father even rebuked him, reproved him. And said to him, what is this dream that you have? Dream. Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come and bow down yourselves, ourselves to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Hallelujah. Did not Yahshua HaMashiach, did he not have ark or an ark that was older than yet he? Did not his Emma or his mother, did they not bow down before him? Israel, hallelujah. All throughout Torah, we can find these examples of even the prophecy of Yahshua, Hamashiach coming into play, Israel, the lamb of Israel that was slain. Hallelujah, way. We do barat all you that are listening by via of live stream. We see that the, the numbers are increasing. Hallelujah. I do hope that this is an inspiration to your left. And if it doesn't do anything, it will cause you to dig even deeper in the Torah as we talk about the Dom of Yahshua. For those of you that are listening by via live stream, I am Zakain Yeramia. I am sitting with you here live at Shema Yisraya tonight. Hallelujah. And we have had a beautiful Pesach unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And I believe that we are putting that online or it's been prepared and it's online for you to go onto our site, Yisraeli, and to view that. And hear the wonderful preaching, the testimonies, the beautiful meal, the sedar, everything that happened here at Teshua. Uh, hallelujah. We do Toda Yahweh and Barak Him for all things, everything. For all that Yahweh has done. Hallelujah. We do Barak Yahweh for the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us move ahead, Yisrael, a little bit to the 37th chapter of Genesis. 37, chapter 37, verse 18. We do know that his ark envied him, they hated him, and they was even contemplating on taking his life, shedding his blood. But they knew the consequences of that, Yisrael, y'all, so they figured that they would just put him in a hole and just leave him, leave him there. So let us move on to uh, chapter 37. Here we are, chapter 37, verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, this is... Um, there are his young ark coming unto them because he was looking for them, Israel. And when they saw him afar off, 
Even before he came near them, they conspired. They conspired against him to slay him, to kill him out of jealousy because of the dreams before he because of the dreams and what he has spoken unto them. Israel, just as we seen in the beginning, what came, they were jealous and it was even willing to shed his blood. Innocent blood, as a matter of fact, Israel. They conspired to, against him to slay him, verse 19. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer come, mockingly. This dreamer comes. Now come, therefore, and let us slay him. Let us strike him down and cast him into the pit. And we will say, Some evil beast has come and devour him. They was even willing to lie. Did not, uh, did not Cain lie concerning what happened to his brother? Abel, some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Tom, don't shed this dom or this life. But cast him into the pit as in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him. He's not willing that his blood, that his brother's blood would be shed. An innocent young man. He hadn't done anything to cause any bodily harm to his ark. That he might be rid out of our hands to deliver him to his father again. Verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brother that they stripped Yosef out of his coat. They took his coat. They took his, his cloak, Yisrael, of many colors. And his coat of many colors that was on him. And there's something significant that they did. We know what transpired in that order. Some of those of us that know Yisrael, that they uh, butchered a goat, a young goat. And they took the blood of that goat. And they took the garment. And as I have mentioned, the garment was a type of Yisrael, the many diversities of Yisrael. But yet we are all one piece. We're one body, one garment, Yisrael. We're all one. And Yahshua HaMashiach. And he took that blood, signifying also the cleansing of Yisrael, that it must be done by the blood of a lamb that is without spot, without blemish or any such thing. There is nothing that they could put on this young man, this young ox. Uh, they could convince him of any sin or anything like that, Yisrael. He was a pure young man. Hallelujah. Verse 23 again. It came to pass when Yosef was come to his brethren that they stripped Yosef out of his coat and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and they cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead from, with their camels, bearing spiceries, balm, mirth, going to carry it down to Mizraim. And Yahuda said to his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Again, his dumb, his blood. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, and he is our flesh. Was not Yahshua, Hamashiach, our brother, Yisrael? Was he not of, of the same flesh that we were made of, Yisrael? And his brother were content. They all agreed. Verse 28. Then there passed by the, the Menatites, the merchants, and they drew and lifted up Yosef out of the pit. And so Yosef to the, Ishma, into, to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. Wasn't that a, a betrayal that they sold his brother? Was not Yahshua betrayed for money? Was it not 20 pieces of silver, Yisrael? 30 pieces of silver, it was for money, for gold. And they brought Yosef to Mizraim, 
And Reuben turned to the pit, and behold, Yosef was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned to his brother and said, the child is not. And I, and I, where shall I go? Verse 31. And they took Yosef's coat. Here it is, taking the coat, the coat of many colors. And they killed a kid of the goats, a young goat. A goat that could have or may have been used even as the Peshach offering. It was a young goat, a kid. And dip the coat, there's the coat again, in the dom. Hallelujah. Have we not been washed in the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach? Have not Almighty Yahweh purged us by his offering of Yahshua HaMashiach from all of our sins, Yisrael? By the sprinkling, by the dipping, or the pouring of the blood of Yahshua, we have been cleansed, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And they sent a coat, they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their, avada, to their fathers and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be your son's coat or not. He observed. He knew it and said, This is my son's coat. This is my coat. He knew that coat because he had made it specifically for him. And he said that an evil beast has devoured him, Yosef is without doubt rent in pieces. Don't you see that, Yisrael? How even after what I have read at time after time, we see the jealousy, we see the all for no reason, we see one that is innocent, walking in the Torah, the Mishra of Yahweh, even seeing the visions or the signs, understanding uh, the signs and the visions, even... Being young, not even understanding it to its full capacity, Israel. But yet we see how even Yahweh, how even we can see Yahshua in each of these examples, Israel. In each example, we can see Yahshua Hamashiach. Yahshua Hamashiach. In each example, Israel. It's important that we understand, that we hear, that we allow the Ruah of Almighty Yahweh to move in our bosom. So open up our ears tonight, Almighty Yahweh, that we may hear what the Ruah is saying uh, to the assemblies today, Israel. We do Barak Yahweh for all things. We do also Barak Yahweh for you that are listening by via of live stream concerning the Dom. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of the Dom? Should we shed the dom of an innocent ark? If we hate our ark or our brother Yisrael, we have slain him, we have killed him already. Let us move on to Bereshit Genesis chapter 42 and verse 7. Hallelujah. We do understand that, um, that Yosef, that he did go on. He became a leader in the land of Mizraim, and he seen his brothers again. They did not recognize him, but he recognized him. And even after all that his ark had did to him, did to him, he still yet had a hava for his ark. But let us read on concerning the dom in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 7. And Yosef, he saw his brethren, and he knew them, but he made himself strange to them. And he spoke roughly to them, and he said to them, Whence come you? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Yosef knew his brethren, but they did not know him. That kind of takes me back, Yisrael, even as we did not know Yahshua HaMashiach. We did not know him. We did not know the, perfect, the, the purpose of Yahshua HaMashiach, Almighty Yahweh, but yet in the beginning of all things, he knew us, Yisrael. He knew us. Even we didn't know him. We did not recognize his Ahava, the offering that he gave for us, Yisrael. But yet even from the beginning, from his full knowledge, he knew Yisrael. So Yosef knew his brothers, but they did not know him. And Yosef, he remembered the dreams which he had of them and said to them, you are spies. To see the nakedness of the land, you are come. He said that they were spies. He knew what they were. 
But yet he put on this, this front that uh, every type of a cover, they would not know who we are. They did not recognize him in Israel. All they knew is that he was a, 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 a high leader there in uh, Mizraim. And they said to him, Nay, nay, my master, but to buy food are your servants come. We are all one man's son, which are true men. Your servants are no spies. And he said to them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land you are come. And they said, Your servants are twelve brethren. Isn't that something? And the sons of one man in the, Can in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father. You see how still they're trying to use the mash of deceit, Israel. And one is not. And Yosef said to him that this, that it is that I spoke to you saying you are spies. He said, hereby you shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not go forth hence except your youngest brother come hither. Send one of you and let them fetch your brother and you shall be kept in prison that your words may be proved whether they be of any truth in you or else by the life of Pharaoh you are surely spies. And he put them all together into the ward for three days. If you be true men, did I not say there was true men, Yisrael? Let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go you, carry corn for the famine to your houses. But bring your youngest brother to me, so shall your words be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. And they said to one another, we are truly guilty. Now they sense the guilt. Now they sense the harm or the judgment and what they have done. We are truly guilty concerning our brother and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear. Therefore is, therefore is this distress come upon us. They realize that they are just reaping what they sowed, the Israel. Don't you know we sow unto the flesh and of the flesh we shall reap corruption, Israel. And Reuben answered him, saying, Spoke I not to you, saying, Do not this sin against the child? And you would not hear, you would not hear me. Therefore, behold, also his blood, his dom, his blood is required. That's a powerful thing, Israel, that the blood is required. Yahweh, he requires even the blood, Israel. He requires the life of these physical bodies. It's not for man, it's not for us to take the life of another man by killing him, hallelujah, only by the instruction of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because it belongs to him. It belongs to him. He is justified. He made us. He's the creator of all things. He has given us what we have, has he not, Yisrael? Did he not give Job his riches, his sons, his heirs? But what did he do? He took it all away from him, Yisrael. Was Yahweh justified? Sure he was. Sure he was. And even in the end, yo, he was better off, hallelujah, than when all those calamities had started. So Yahweh, he is justified. It all belongs to him. Verse 22 again. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spoke I not to you, saying, Do not this sin against the child, and you will not hear me. Therefore, behold, also, his blood is required. Don't you know the Dom of Yahshua is required, Yisrael? The Dom that was shed on Calvary, on that stake, on that tree. Don't you know Yahweh, he shall require of every man, judge every man, according to every sin that has been done in his body, Yisrael, in that great Yom of Almighty Yahweh. And yes, the Dom is required. Hallelujah. Yahweh requires the dumb, Yisrael. No matter what we may think, it still takes the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. We cannot go around the Torah of Almighty Yah. 
We can't do it, Yisrael. Yahweh, he requires the dom. And he will have nothing less but the dom. Hallelujah. He do require the dom for the remission, for the pardoning of all, of all sin. Hallelujah, Yahweh. If you would, at this time, Yisrael, turn with me to Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, concerning the Passover, hallelujah, of Yisrael. Out of Mizraim, we must remember the Passover. As Yahweh, his Ruach, his judgment, his hand, passed over Mizraim. And it was important that the instructions of Almighty Yahweh was obeyed, just as we must obey the instructions of Almighty Yahweh, that we have the dom upon the bed, upon the doorpost, upon the lintel, the, the dom of Yahshua, it must be seen, for he is our Peshach, Yisrael. At that time, in Mizraim, they had to take a lamb. The lamb is not required at this time. Why? Because it's Yahweh's Peshach. He has provided Yahshua, Hamashiach, his dom, for our remission of our sins. So does Yahweh still pass over? Sure he does, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But because he sees the Dom, because he sees the Torah uh, in Yisrael, hallelujah, we are not consumed. That our firstborn are not consumed. The things that he placed in us, what he has given us, Yisrael, should not die. Hallelujah. Exodus, Shema, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and Aharon in the land of Mizraim, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Verse 3. Speak you to all the congregation of Yisrael, saying, In the tenth month of this month, they shall make to them every man a lamb. Amongst thousands of thousands of people, a lamb was required. According to the house of their of their fathers, a lamb per a house. Can you imagine Israel on yesterday? If it was not for the Dhamma Yahshua, the offering of Yahshua Hamashiach, would, would Yahweh still yet require us today? Sure he would. Can you imagine you out there that I listen to my Viv live stream? How many you may have in your household? your family, your kindred, how many lambs would that take? For some of you all that are in suburbs or even in the country that do not have a way to get a lamb, do not have the finances to pay for a lamb or a goat, Yisrael. How will we go through this Peshach that our nephesh, our firstborn, will be saved, Yisrael? It would be almost impossible. Hallelujah. You have to spend the entire year to make the preparation that you there be a lamb or a piece of lamb or some lamb that you may share that you may share or the dom of the lamb, the blood, that you can please this offering of Almighty Yahweh. Did Cain please Almighty Yah? No, he did not. So no offering would please Yahweh but this dom offering, which he requires. The dom and the fat, Israel, the meat. Yahweh requires that of Israel. But because he has given us Yahshua HaMashiach, and I brought Almighty Yahweh for that. He is our Passover. And only that offering one time was enough for all bad Yisrael. Hallelujah. Is that not beautiful, Yisrael? We do Barak Yahweh for his Pesach. Let us move on. Verse 5. And your lamb shall be without spot. It shall be without blemish, Yisrael. That would be tough. Even here at Teshua, we have lamb here. We have quite a bunch of lamb. But it's very hard for us to go out there and find a lamb without spot or without blemish. I don't believe we have one without spot or without blemish. You may have a, 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 a white lamb, but I guarantee you somewhere you're going to see a spot or a blemish or some kind of, of, of defect, Israel. So it required that they have a lamb without blemish, and it must be a male, a male of the first year. We know that Yahshua, he was the first begotten son of Almighty Yahweh, his Mishra, his Torah, made flesh. A male of the first year, you shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it unto the 14th day 
of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So whatever lamb per household or the dividing of that Peshat lamb, verse 7, and they shall take the dawn, the blood. And like I said before, Israel, some of us at the side of blood, we almost run from it. Blood, it stains things. Um, there, there could be a spot of blood on the ground, uh, on highways, there have been accidents. And you, and you can still go there, get some scrapings or scientists or phys physicists um, or wh whomever. And they can still find the traces of blood on an object, no matter basically how old it is. The blood is still there. Aren't you glad that the Dhamma of Yahshua, hallelujah, is still there, Yisrael? And the blood of Yahshua, Hamashiach, it should never lose its power, its cleansing power. And it should take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire, not sodden, but cooked, roasted with fire and with the unleavened bread. It's very important, Israel, that we have this, oh, the bread must be unleavened. We cannot have anything in us, Yisrael, that is not of Almighty Yahweh, that does not correspond with the Torah of Yahshua HaMashiach, the Word. Because if we do, that is a sign of leaven in our lives. So we have checked our lives. We have um, examined our lives, examined ourselves for the leaven, Yisrael. And they shall eat the flesh of it at night and roast with fire and with unleavened bread. And with the bitter herbs, they shall eat it. And we did do that on this past yom, this past day. Hallelujah. He said, eat not of it raw, verse 9, or sodden it with water. But he commanded that it be roasted with heat, with fire. His head with his legs and with the inward parts thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remain of it until the morning, you shall burn it with fire. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girdled and your shoes on your feet. See, this was a type of readiness or preparation. That was the purpose of the loins being girdled and having shoes for the traveling or the departure or to move Yisrael, they must have, we must have our loins girded about with the truth of Almighty Yahweh and our feet should be shod with preparation. That is what the shoes on the feet at this time, they must have the shoes. It was for the preparation of the moving of Almighty Yahweh. Are we prepared? Are we ready to move Yisrael? Hallelujah. And your staff is not the staff of Almighty Yahweh, our comfort. It's what uphold us. It's what keeps us steady in this walk with Yahshua HaMashiach in this direct, in this way. The staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. What are we eating, Israel? Are we eating this patient? Are we eating Yahshua? Are we eating upon the Leshem of this bread of the, his body and partaking of the Dhamma of Yahshua in haste, Israel? Because we know that time, it is short. We do not have the time that we had yesterday. We do not have the time that we had just a minute or a second ago, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We know that the time of all things is coming to its conclusion. So what kind of haste are we in? Are our loins girdled? Do we have everything we need? Are we, do we possess the staff of Almighty Yahweh? Do we have our shoes prepared with the preparation of this message of Yahshua HaMashiach? Hallelujah. Are we ready to move, Yisrael? Are we ready, ready to move? With your staff in your hand, verse 11, and you shall eat it in haste. Why? It is Yahweh's Passover. And I want you to understand Yahweh, Israel, Yah, it said it is Yahweh's Passover. This is unto Yah. We do this unto Yah in remembrance of Yahshua HaMashiach. This is the purpose of why we do this. That we do not forget. As I mentioned unto 
the conditions on yesterday. This is not something that we should do just once a year, but every day is a Pesach. Every day we should be prepared, prepared to move. Every day our loins should be girdled with the Mishvah and the Torah of Yahweh, having his staff which comfort us. Did not Dawid say that his rod and his staff, it comforts him? Yisrael Yah, hallelujah. What is a staff used for? Two things, correction, a rod, it is used, but also to uphold you in, in a journey, to, present, to take off some of the weight off your feet as, we, as you're traveling. In Yahshua HaMashiach, he is truly our staff, Yisrael Yah. Because we do not have to do these things as Yisrael Yah at this time. Why? Because Yahshua had not come yet. The offering had not come yet, but many times Yahweh showed us through Torah example and example of the dom, of the blood, Yisrael Yah. And it must be from a lamb that is without spot or blemish. Do we not see the example of, of, of Abel? The example of Yosef, young men, or abiding in the Torah of the Mishra of Yahweh? Hallelujah. Let us move on. It is Yahweh's Passover, verse 11. Verse 12, he said, For I will pass through the land of Mizraim this night, through the land of Egypt. And I do believe, Israel, that the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh passed through on this past night. The Ruach of Yahweh passed through every night, Israel. Hallelujah. Where there are two or three gathered, there he is in the midst of us. For I will pass through the land of Mizraim this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim, both the son of man, Adam, and beast. So even the beast that was possession of every house that did not have the dumb upon the lintel, upon the doorpost, they even lost their first young. So Yahweh, he is not playing Israel. He does still this day require the blood. Hallelujah. Don't you bear out Yahweh for the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. Hallelujah. His staff has made it easy for us, Yisrael. His Torah, his misvah. Both sons of Adam and beast, verse 12 of chapter 12 of Exodus, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. So even the gods, the lords, those that were over the troops or over uh, the armies, those that were in the king's palace, there with Pharaoh, every firstborn, there was no one that was missed even unto the gods of Egypt. He said, I will execute judgment. Why? He said, because I am Yahweh. Does that justify him alone? Sure it does, because he is Yahweh, Israel. Yah. There are those that have their reenactments, they have their readings of the Passover, and they try to smooth that over or try to make it uh, suitable for the ears. But no, Yahweh, he shed blood. He shed blood upon the firstborn of all those that did not have this lamb or the dom of this lamb on the lintel or on the doorpost. Hallelujah. Do we have the dom of Yahshua, Yisrael, upon our bayet, upon the lintel, upon the doorpost of our bayet, Yisrael, that when the Ruach of Yahweh moves, when his judgment moves, Yisrael, that it will pass over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must have the Dom of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Verse 14. For this day shall be to you a memorial that we remember, a zikra, that we may remember, Yisrael, a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh, Throughout your generations. Now, how are we going to keep this feast of Almighty Yahweh, this Pesach, through our generations? We must teach it. We must teach it to our children and children's children, Yisrael. It's important that we understand the aspects, even the order that Yahweh has commanded us, that we may walk in the Mishvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that we zakah, that we remember all that Yahweh has done. He delivered us from Israel every day, Yisrael. From the Mizraim of our minds, the confusion of our minds, from the captivity of our minds, of our thoughts, of our doubts, Yisrael, us being of little faith, 
that we find it hard to move in the Mishpah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, but yet this is Yahweh's patience. He has provided a way for Yisrael to escape. Hallelujah. Isn't that tough, Yisrael? That Yahshua HaMashiach allows us to escape from these things. All we have to do is abide in his Mishpah and his Torah that we have it upon our doorposts, hallelujah, upon the entrance of our Lev, Yisrael. Yahweh has written his Torah upon our lives, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Throughout your generations, in verse 14 of chapter 12, Exodus, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread, and we are within um, this, these seven days of unleavened Yisrael. We should not eat anything leavened. Even to the first day, you shall put away the leaven out of your houses. Not only do we search our homes, Israel, yes, we search our bayit, we search our homes for the leaven, we get the leaven out. You must be uh, uh, very watchful of what's in your homes. Even me and my Israel, we, we look on the back of the ingredients of things, looking for the yeast, and all you have to do is just look it up in the dictionaries or just pull it up on um, um, a website, the Wikipedia, and it will show you um, the different forms. They got so many different names for just a simple thing, Israel. But if you're diligent, and if you're willing and obedient unto Almighty Yahweh, you will be able to seek those things out and find the leaven in your love. We must be, that's an act. We do that to, to show that we uh, are searching even our physical man for the leavening. This lump, this leavening that is in our bodies, Yisrael. Hallelujah. You shall eat unleavened bread even the first day and put away the leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that show shall be cut off from Yisrael. And in the first day there should be a codex convocation. And on the seventh day there should be a codex convocation. What that is is a gathering, Yisrael, that we should gather with one another. To you, no matter a work shall be done in them, those first and in, in, in the last days, it should be a Shabbat, Shabbaton. Nevertheless, that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Israel. To me, Israel, every time I read that, I think about it. I can see how even this day that Yahweh had delivered me, hallelujah, out of the land, out of this mindset, Yisrael, don't think that we will not be tried by the many aspects of Egypt, what we see around us, hallelujah. Did not Satan come to Yahshua HaMashiach to try him? Even trying to bring Torah to try him, to see where he stood, Yisrael, hallelujah. So we must find ourselves of this deliverance of the Dom, this Pesach of Almighty Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach, as he deliver us from our worries. He deliver us from our thoughts, Yisrael. He deliver us from our shortcomings, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He deliver us from any doubt or any situation, Yahweh. He is Yahweh Pesach. He is our escape. Hallelujah. That Pesach lamb was a type of escape. It is our escape. Hallelujah, from the judgment, the impending judgment of Almighty Yahweh. There should be no matter of work shall be done, and then nevertheless that which every man must eat, only that shall be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of eleven from the self same day, I have brought your armies out of the land of Mizraim. That is this group of many people, these armies, Yisrael. Therefore, shall you observe this day and your generations that it be an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the first or the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Whosoever eats that which is leavened, that same shall shall be cut off for the congregation of Israel, whether it be a stranger or one born in the land. He said, you shall not, you shall eat nothing leaven in your habitations. You shall eat only unleavened bread. Hallelujah.
Only unleavened bread, Yisrael. I want to read a few more verses, and we're going to go into, uh, if I may say, a little break. We're going to listen to a few songs here from Teshua, the voices of Teshua. Hallelujah. Exodus 21. And Moshe called for all the elders of Yisrael and said to them, Draw out and take a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. What is hyssop, Yisrael? What is hyssop? It's a plant used for medical uses, for uh, different types of practices. Basically, it's, it's really no more than just um, a mint herb. It is, has a very, uh, when it's in bunches, it's got a very fragrant smell, uh, a very beautiful smell. A bunch of hyssop. And it said to dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And it says to strike. He didn't say to paint. He didn't say to just wipe it on there. He didn't say just draw it. But he said you take the hyssop, the herb, this fragrant herb, you dip it in the dom, and then you strike it. You strike it on the doorpost. You strike it. Hallelujah. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach stricken? Did he not have the, uh, the whips or the scourges upon his back, Yisrael? He was stricken. Above all men, there was no man that was beaten as he was, Yisrael, upon his body. So even that was a sweet-smelling savor unto Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because Yahshua is Yahweh's Pesach. Hallelujah. Yahshua is the Pesach lamb, the escape lamb for Yisrael. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful, Yisrael? Don't you see the simplicity of that? It's just so simple, Yisrael, for us to understand that even... It was a sweet-smelling savor unto Yahweh, but yet also it had that essence of the blood of the dumb. That is a sweet-smelling thing that Yahweh, he was even pleased. Did not Torah say that he was pleased? Did it not please Yahweh to bruise him, Israel? hallelujah, to strike him? You should take the bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two doorposts. With the blood that is in the basin. This is showing Yahshua HaMashiach. And none of you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning. For Yahweh will pass through and smite the Egypts, Egyptians. And when he sees the dumb. Don't you told Yah that he sees the dumb as he passes over as Yisrael. The dumb of Yahshua that has been applied to the house of Yisrael. His elect, his chosen. Upon the lid and on two doorposts, he will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer, his malak, his messenger, to come into your bayet to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for ordinance to you and your sons forever and ever. Hallelujah. Let us go to a song, Israel. Oh, we have some beautiful music here. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Cannot go around. Oh, we cannot go around the Torah. Hallelujah. Oh, you cannot go around this, Israel. It takes the Dom. The Dom of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Oh yes. The Torah. It's so high You can't, oh, you can't. go over it You can't go over it so Oh, it's so low, Israel You can't go over it Oh, isn't that beautiful, Israel? So high You go to the highest mountain, even to the lowest valley Hallelujah Oh yes, and I go around the Torah. Torah of Yah. Oh yes, come on, Yisrael. Can't go around. Can't go around. No, can't go around. Can't go around. Can't go around. Hallelujah. All the Torah. Listening by VF Live Stream. 
Yes, I'll tell you, Rami, I'm sitting here live with you all here at Shemak Israel. Oh, you must come in at the door, the door, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't go around. You cannot go around the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. As we continue on this subject, Yisrael, the da, the blood, the purpose of it. Should we shed innocent blood, Yisrael? Don't you know if you hate your ark, you have an ark? That is leaven, Yisrael, against your a hope, against your brother, your sister. You have shed blood. Hallelujah. 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 Is Yahweh justified? Was he justified when he smote Mizraim and all the firstborn, Israel? Did he have uh, a reason to explain to us what he does and why he does it? No, he does not have to. Hallelujah. Why? Because he has made all things. Job said that Yahweh, you give to me an abundance and you take it away. And what did he do? He barak his precious name. He barak the name of Almighty Yahweh. Turn with me, if you will go to Debrium, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, he said, See now that I, even I, am he that, and there is no other mighty one, that there is no other God that is before me. No one before me. I stand alone. I don't need anyone else. I don't need anyone to consult, to ask of, of any wisdom. There is no other. He says that I kill. Do he kill? Does he move Yisrael? 
Does he execute? Does he execute his judgment? He says, I kill and I make alive. He said, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Once Yahweh takes a hold of a nation, a hold of a people, a hold of you, there is no one that can deliver you out of his hands. Verse 40. He said, for I lift up my hand to the Shemayim and I say, I live forever. Verse 41. He said, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance unto my enemies and I will reward Shalom to them that hate me. What that is saying, Yahweh said, I'm not, I'm going to reward peace to them that hate me. What he said, I will make an end. I will make an end to them. No, it's not the Shalom that he gives unto Israel. Yah. He gave his beloved shalom, rest. No, that's not what he's saying, Israel. He said, I should make an end. I should stop. I make an end to my enemies that hate me, those that hate me. He said, I will make my arrows drunk with the blood, with the dom, the blood. And my sword shall devour the flesh, and that with the blood of the slain, of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon my enemies. He says to Israel, rejoice, O you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. You don't think Yahweh is going to avenge his judgment of his servants, of his Nabi, of his Kedusha, of uh, Yahshua HaMashiach? You think that's just a light thing, Israel. He says that. Rejoice, all you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries. This is Yahweh. He said, I will be merciful to his land, to his land and to his people. So Yahweh will be merciful unto Israel, unto our land, and unto our people. Verse 44. And it says, And Moshe came and spake all these words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Hosea, the son of Nun. And Moshe made an end of the speaking of all these words unto all Israel. And he said to them, Set your left. Let us set our hearts, Israel. Set our minds. Focus our mind. Let us set our hearts to all the words which I testify among you this day. Let's do that, Israel. All the words that I've testified to you. If you followed along, you see that I came from Torah. No, nothing of my own. It all come out of the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. So let us, Israel, let us take heed. Let us hold unto the things which we have heard, Israel. Hallelujah. From the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, let your hearts do all the words of which I testify among you this day, which you shall com command unto your children. So all this we should teach our children. We should command our children to observe and not only to observe, but to do all the words of this Torah. For it's not a vain thing for you, because it is our life. It is our life, Israel. When we walk in the simplicity of Torah, that is our life, what we do unto Almighty Yahweh. Our everyday walk should be a light, hallelujah, a light that cannot go out, a light that cannot be hid, Israel. Which you shall command your children to observe, to do all Call all the words of this Torah, for it's not a vain thing, because it is your life. And through this thing shall you prolong your days in the land. So as we do this, Israel, as we zakah, as we remember the offering, Yahweh's Peshach of Yahshua HaMashiach, the dom that has been shed for the remission, our escape for our sins, Israel, it says that it should prolong our days. It shall prolong our days. We should not give our lives or ourselves unto much foolishness. 
Hallelujah. Why die us? Why should we die before our time, Yisrael? He said, where you go over Jordan to possess it. We're going to possess all things that Yahweh has given unto us. He has promised us, Yisrael. All we have to walk is just simply obey and walk in his Mishpah, his Torah. Hallelujah. 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 Let us move on, Yisrael. So the Yahweh, we brought Yahweh for all things, even for the simplicity of his Torah on this night. We do Barak you all that are listening by via live stream. Those of you that may have come on, I see we have a few more that came on tonight. Hallelujah. I'm Zakir Yaramia sitting here live with you all. We're discussing the Dom, the blood, the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach, the purpose of the blood of innocent blood. We talked about Cain and Abel, how Cain slew his brother Abel, and Abel has been a type of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach has been slain. See, he, he has done no sin, Yisrael. He has done no sin. Nothing. But yet, in all, he has been our Pesach lamb, without spot, without blemish, or any such things. So we do not resort unto uh, the butchering of goats or sheep, because most of us cannot even find it's almost hard to find a perfect lamb or perfect sheep without spot or blemish. Did Yahweh require that? Yes, he did. In Mizraim, did he require it? Yes, he did. Does he require it today? Yes, he did. And yes, he does, even on this day. But our lamb is the lamb, the offering of Yahshua, HaMashiach. Hallelujah. He provided that lamb for us, Yisrael. Let us turn. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. Concerning the vision of Yisrael, the son of Amos. Verse 1. The vision of Yisrael, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Yotham, Aza, and Hezekiah, kings of Yehuda. He says, hear, O heavens, and give ear. Should we give ear, Yisrael? Should we hear? Should we shema? O earth. For Yahweh has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Do we find ourselves rebelling? Rebelling? Has he brought us up? Has he brought us this far by Imuna, Israel? Then why should we rebel? Why should we transgress? Why should we backslide against the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? He says in verse 3 that the ox knows his owner, his master, the one that feeds him, the one that takes care of him. And the ass his master crib. But Yisrael knows not. He, he does not know. My people does not consider me. My mind. We do not consider. Don't you know Yahweh just wants us to consider, just to obey, ponder his Torah, his commandments, Yisrael, to consider Yahshua HaMashiach, the shame that he suffered on the stake for us. Hallelujah. For our sins. Verse 4. Alas, a sinful nation. Is he talking about uh, Mizraim, Egypt, the pagans. No, he's talking about his house. Alas, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. My, did not um, Cain have the seed of Satan in him that he slew the innocent blood of Abel and then he lied concerning his act, Israel? Satan was a, the beginning. He was a liar and the father of it. That provoked the Kadush one of Yisrael to anger. They are going away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? You revolt and continue in apostasy. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. My, my. He said, your land is laid waste and your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. Do we find this possession that Yahweh has given, has promised us unto us, being devoured by our enemies, Israel, being devoured by strangers in our presence. We see even our very Amunna being taken away from us, Israel. It's because we have not stood as Yahweh has commanded concerning the Torah, his Mishvah. We have gone way backwards, Israel. If we do not walk in the statutes, even concerning the remembrance of his Pesach in this time frame, Yisrael, if we, do, if we don't seek to obey Yahweh and all that he do, we'll find our way, ourselves going backwards as a backsliding heifer. 
He said, the strangers devour your possessions or your land in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. You know what happens to a cottage in a vineyard? A, a, a yard that has the grape vines and the fruit trees, if they're not kept, then the cottage is overcome. It is overtaken, Israel. It is brought down and is brought low. As a lodge in the garden of cucumbers. You can see what cucumbers do. They climb. They stretch out. They can overtake other plants. As a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Verse 9. He said, except Yahweh of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, he would have become like Sodom. We know what happened to Sodom. There wasn't nothing left, Israel. Everything was destroyed. And we should have been made like unto Gomorrah. Verse 10. Hear the words of Yahweh, O you rulers of Saddam. Give ear to the Torah of our sovereign ruler, O you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices? This is concerning the offering, Yisrael, or the sacrifices, the zavach. The sacrifices, the offerings unto Almighty Yahweh. Do we think if we continue in uh, what was started um, in Mizraim concerning the Peshach of the slaughter of the, the bulls and the slaughter um, um, of the sheep, of the lamb, and bringing that before Almighty Yahweh, is that what he desires in, his, in this hour? Is that what he wants, Yisrael? Let us move on. You know, there are those that still continue this practice. Sure. Sure, there are those that do this practice. And it is a stench in the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh. Why do you say that, Zakane? Because we have made it a formality. See, this mishvah should be made real within our Levim, Yisrael. Not just an act that we do outwardly, but it is something that we live every day, Yisrael. Did not the Torah, did I, just, just, did not I read that it is our life? It is what keeps us. It was, it's what provides us with strength to move beyond our present circumstances, Yisrael, and our understanding and our imunah. Does Yahweh desire the blood? Does he desire the fat of the ram to this day? Let us read on. We will find out. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices, of your offerings to me, declares Yahweh. Yahweh, he's declaring this. I am full of of the burnt offering and the ram. Yahweh said, I'm sick of it. I'm weary with it. That is not what I want. You bring forth these offerings to me and your love is corrupt. You bring forth these offerings to me and you're not committed. You do not walk in my, vis my misfire and my Torah. What is the purpose, Yisrael? What is the purpose for us to continually sin before Almighty Yahweh and offering up these offerings or these sacrifices? Hallelujah. Do we trample the Dharma of Yahshua? Do we count it or not? Those that still practice this, they count the Dharma of Yahshua, Hamashiach, as being un, uh, not. They discount or discredit Yahshua, Hamashiach, coming in the flesh as we are in this flesh and dying upon the stake. Hallelujah. For the sins of all men. They deny that. They don't believe Yahshua, Hamashiach, is come. They have not come to the knowledge or have not come to the knowledge of that Yisrael. There's a stench in the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh. He said, I'm full in verse 11, chapter 1 of Isaiah, of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of the fatted beasts. And I delight not in what? The dumb, the blood, this blood. It's worthless to me. Upon thousands upon thousands of years, you have brought these acts, and it has not produced anything in the love of Israel. Yah. So that's not what Yahweh desires. He does not desire the dom or the blood of the bullock or of the lambs or of the goats. So why do we continue with these sacrifices, Israel? Yah? Why do we continue bringing these things before Almighty Yahweh that does not excite his heart, that he is not pleased? Was he pleased in the offering of Cain? No, he was not. Was he pleased what? What, what the ark did to Yosef, what his brothers did to Yosef? No, he was not, Israel. Verse 12. He said, when you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread 
my courts. He says, do not, do not add to bringing more vain adulations. It's incense is an abomination to me. He said the incense, the smell, the, the fragrance of it, it's an abomination to me. I cannot endure the new months, the Shabbats, and the calling of the assemblies and the vain festival. So even in that act, Israel, Yah, even the new months of the year, that Yahweh has commanded us to observe these things, you telling me that he is sick of that because we continue to bring these blood offerings of the bullocks, the things that do not plead him? Don't you know he desires us to just be obedient? That's all we have to do. Yahshua has made the way for us. All we have to do is walk in the Torah, what he has commanded us to do. What is that, Zakin Yeramia? To walk without sin. To believe in he whom Yahweh have sent. Hallelujah. To walk in the Torah, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. He said in verse 14 again, Your new months and, you, and your appointed feasts my soul hates. Even they are a burden unto me. I am very weary of bearing them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands, they are full of blood. What is that saying, Israel? Of abominations? Of wickedness? Of transgression? He says here, to repent, wash yourselves, purify yourselves, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Stop doing evil. Stop doing raah, ra, evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. Learn to do well. How do we learn to do well? We must be taught, Yisrael. That is the purpose of the Zarkane, of the Nabi, of the Reah that we may understand the simplicity of Torah, that we may walk. Isn't this simple tonight, Israel? It's not hard to understand. It's not hard to understand, Israel. If we just open our ears and allow the Ruach HaKadosh and this, his soft voice to interpret what is being said through his Torah tonight. Wash yourselves, purify yourselves, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Stop doing evil. That's the first thing we must do. Learn to do well, seek justice, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. We don't even see this in this hour, Yisrael. Come now, let us reason together. Now look at this. Yahweh wants to reason with us. He wants to prove us. He wants to judge. He wants to rebuke. He wants to correct. He wants to reason, Yisrael. Not according to our desires and our wants. That's not how he's going to reason. He's going to reason according to his Torah, or to what his Mishra says. Come now and let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Hallelujah. All we have to do is reason. Allow Yahweh to rebuke us, to reprove us, to instruct us, to set this crooked path aright, Yisrael. They shall be as white. As snow. Don't you want your garments white as snow, Yisrael? Without spot, without blemish or any such thing. Though they are red like crimson, they should be as white as wool. If you'll be willing, we must be willing. We must be obedient. He said, then you shall eat the tub of the land. How many of you want to eat the tub of the land tonight, Yisrael? Raise your hand before Yahweh if you want to eat the tub of the land. Hallelujah. I want to eat the tub of the land. I want to eat that which Yahweh has desired us, Yisrael, to have. He desires us to have. Hallelujah. He desires us to want of him, not to wax wanting in our flesh, desiring after the lust and the things of this life, but to want him, Yisrael, to desire him, to want to be in his presence, to want to be close at his love, Yisrael. Hallelujah. All we have to do is be willing, be willing and obedient unto him, unto his Torah, his Mishvah. Be willing and obedient, and we shall eat the tub of the land. But if you refuse, come on, Israel, why would we refuse? Here is Yahweh opening, holding out his right hand unto Israel, Israel through Yahshua HaMashiach, 
Why would we refuse him? Why would we refuse the dumb of Yahshua tonight? The, the dumb upon the doorpost and upon the lentils of our love, Israel. Why would we refuse that? Hallelujah. That the judgment of Yahweh would pass over us. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. And we know once Yahweh speak a thing, it is so, Yisrael. His judgment, once he has spoken it, it shall be. Whether it's for our enlightenment, for our enhancing, or is it for our destruction or our judgment, once Yahweh speak it, it is sealed. Hallelujah. It is sealed, Yisrael. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us move on, Israel. Told to Yahweh. Oh, for Yahweh his tub and his mercies, they do endure forever and ever. Hallelujah. Yahweh is tub and his mercies endure. Turn with me to Yakahana. Let's, let's, uh, Read a little in Yakahanan as I'm bringing this teaching, this message, this preaching, however you uh, want to receive it, Yisrael, concerning the Dom. No, Yahweh at this time, he do not require, he is sick of the blood and of the fat of the bull oxes. Why? Because he has provided Yahshua. He has provided the offering, the Passover, the Pesach for Yisrael. All he wants us to do to come together as a people, as a nation, on these Migron, on these, uh, on these days of festivities that we gather, have these Kodesh convocations. We just come together, Yisrael. Come on. Come on. We, we, we labor to go on trips. We labor to go to the malls, to the Walmarts, to the Kmarts. We labor to do what we want to do. We save our, our, our retirements or our work days or our off days for all kind of events. But when it comes to us joining together as one, Yahweh desires that. As one people that we come together, we celebrate him. We celebrate Yahshua HaMashiach. We come together and Zakar to remember. He just wants us to remember Yisrael. Come on. There are those of you that have pictures in your homes. I have pictures in my home of those that have passed, that have gone. And, and sometimes you don't even think about that person. You can say what you want to. You have to be reminded. You have to, be, you have to remember. You have to Zakar. When you walk by, you see that picture. Your mind could be somewhere else on another thing, another situation. But when you walk by and you see that, you remember that person. You remember the tough times and the slow times, even the bad times, Israel. That's all Yahshua wants us to do, not to forget him. That's all Yahweh desire. It's for us to come together as a people and as a nation and, 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 and worship. Praise him, magnify his name on what he has given unto us. Oh, he's given us much more than we ever could give back unto him, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So why don't we just give all? Why don't we give our bodies? Don't you know he desires that? Our nephesh, our body as a living offering, kodesh without spot and blemish unto him, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yahshua gave his body, did he not? Then why should we not want to give our bodies, our lives, our high? Unto Almighty Yahweh. That's all he asked for, Yisrael. That's all that he wants. Hallelujah. Yakahanan, as I bring this to a close. Hallelujah. Yakahanan, chapter 6, verse 24. And when the people therefore saw that Yahshua was not there, neither his disciples, his disciplined ones, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum. They were seeking, looking for Yahshua because of the miracles that he'd done before their eyes. He fed them. He took care of them, watched over them. He taught them. Yes, right, yeah. Verse 25. And when they had found him on the outer side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, Master, when came you hither? And Yahshua answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me because, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now, this is Yahshua explaining what we as Yisrael should be ascertaining to, should desire of him. Hallelujah. The true bread of life, the true leshem, the wine, the dom, hallelujah, the water that we thirst not again, Yisrael. Yahshua answered and said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, 
You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. And he said, labor not for the meat which perishes. Is that what we laboring for, Israel? Is that all we are doing in this hour? Are we just working, passing time, laboring just for the means to sustain this physical life? Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures to everlasting life. I want a bite of that, Yisrael. I want a piece of that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. Did he not give that unto us? Come on, Yisrael. He's given that unto us. He has given his body this leshem. He has given it unto us, Yisrael, because you did eat the loaves. I mean, I'm sorry, verse 27. They were not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. He has given that to us, Yisrael. For him has Yahweh the Abba sealed. Now, I don't know about you, but when I shop for meat or I look for packages of meat, Yisrael, I don't want to get something that's been laying out in the open, not sealed. I don't believe any of you want that. I won't pick up something in the store. Even when I get things, I want to make sure the tops are tight. They're not open. You want to uh, look at the packages and see if there's some holes or something like that. Because that allows contaminants to get in, dirt and other things to get in there. So you want to get a package that is sealed. The package, Yahshua HaMashiach, and time's getting short. Yahshua HaMashiach has been sealed by Almighty Yahweh. I want that package. I want that lesson, that meat, that bread. Hallelujah. I want to partake of that. Have we not partaken of the body, the lesson of Yahshua, Hamashiach? Hallelujah. And Passover, Yisrael. The meals. Which, I want to read that again. Let me read that again. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat that endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him has Yahweh the Abba. Sealed. Every time it is fresh, Israel. You want to open up that lesson, it is fresh. You open up the Torah, it is fresh. You, it, you read the Torah, you get into the Torah, it's always fresh, Israel. There have been messages that I have preached a few times, and every time I look or I listen or I speak on it, it's always fresh, Israel. Why? Because it is sealed. It is sealed by Almighty Yahweh. Let us move on, verse 28. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we might work these works of Yahweh? And Yahshua said, answered and said to them, This is the work of Yahweh, that you believe on him whom he has sent. And they said therefore to him, What signs show you then that we may see and that way we may believe you to do your work? Verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna. In the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from the Shemayim to eat. Then Yahshua said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, Moshe gave you not that bread from the Shemayim. Now, Moshe didn't give us this bread, hallelujah, but it came from Abba Yahweh. But by my Abba gives you the true bread from the Shemayim. And Yahshua is that true bread. Do we take of him, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Do we eat the body of Yahshua HaMashiach? And drink the blood, the Dhamma Yahshua. For this we should do in remembrance of him, as often as we do it, Yisrael. For the bread of Yahweh is he that comes down from the Shemayams and gives life to the world. Then said they to him, Yahshua evermore, give us this bread. And Yahshua said to them, I am the bread of life. I am he that comes. If you come to me, you shall never hunger. And he that believes on me, he shall never thirst. Hallelujah. So let us partake of this lesson of Yahshua HaMashiach. For he is Yahweh's Pesach. Hallelujah. This is Yahweh's Pesach. Hallelujah. This is given as a gift unto Yisrael from only Almighty Yahweh. Nobody can give you a gift like Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. This bread of life, this lesson. This pure water, this wine of refreshment, Israel, hallelujah. We drink of this water, we shall never thirst again. We eat of the lesson, 
this body of Yahshua HaMashiach, hallelujah, that we should never hunger, hallelujah, to the Yahweh, for he is sent from Almighty Yahweh. Aren't you glad of that, Yisrael, y'all? Hallelujah, that Yahweh has provided his paycheck. Hallelujah, this is his paycheck. So let us rejoice forevermore. Let us be happy, Yisrael, y'all. We do barak you all for joining us tonight. Again, it's Zakir and Yoramia sitting here with you live at the voice of Teshua. Hallelujah. So let us shemak. Hallelujah. Let us listen. Let us hear. Let us not only hear, but let us obey. Hallelujah. And again, this is Zakir and Yoramia and Shemak Yisrael tonight. Yahweh Barak y'all. Feel free to send your emails to place your comments on, um, on the website. And all the information um, is there for you, for you all at the bottom of the page. Hallelujah. If you're listening by via live stream, Yahweh Barak you all. Shalom. Shalom all Yisrael. Yahweh Barak.